Stop using Edpuzzle within Google Classroom. There's a much better way. Hello and welcome back. I am Mrs. P. Tarleton, here to help you work smarter and not harder. Did you know that you no longer have to use Edpuzzle and import it into Google Classroom? It is all right here in Google Classroom. You can ask all the questions and do all the things just like Edpuzzle, except it's all embedded in Google Classroom and it's going to save you time. Log into your Google Classroom, go to Classwork, Create an Assignment. You're going to title your assignment and then you can either paste a link here with the YouTube link or you can even search for a YouTube video. So let's search. I like Mr. J's video, so let's take that one. We're going to add this video, but instead of adding before we do that, we want to add question right here. Click add questions and it comes up with your video. Here is where you're going to add questions. You can also set the details and put your instructions here. And you can also set a start and stop time for your video. So if you don't want the whole video, to play, you only want the students to look at half of this video because it's really, really long. You just change the time here and we can shorten that video. You have special instructions you want to add. You would list them here. Type in any additional instructions, but you don't have to. So let's go ahead and add some questions. I'm going to scroll through this video and find where I want to add the question. So this is going to be my first question because we've kind of already covered it. This is a review, but I wanted to give the students the steps as well in case they have forgotten. So I'm going to add, you can do multiple choice or check boxes if there's multiple answers that could apply or open ended where the students just type their answers. If it's open ended, you will need to go in and grade those and I'll show you how to do that as well. But let's go first with multiple choice and it's at seven seconds. That's where that first question is going to be. And I'm just going to type my question here or you can just say answer question one. Then down here, you're going to write your answer options. I like to include mistakes that I think the students will make to make sure that we really know what we're talking about. If you want to shuffle the order of your answers, you can click shuffle and it will shuffle them around. So that it will automatically be graded, choose which answer option is correct. And in this case, it would be a positive five. Then scroll down to the bottom, press save and continue. So then I'm going to keep going through the video and I want to do the next question right before the video starts talking about how to do this question. So that's right there at four minutes, seven seconds. You can see that here. And I'm going to add another question, multiple choice. Notice it automatically pops up if we're in the right spot. If you don't want to scroll through your video, you can just type in the time if you know exactly where your question's at. Add the question. Again, we're making this multiple choice, so it'll be automatically graded for the students. This is really cool. And you're going to see why, because if the students get it wrong, they get an option to redo it. And the good thing about that is you'll know if they had to redo it. I'm going to shuffle the order. Didn't shuffle, did it shuffle? There it goes. Not a really good shuffle. And choose my correct answer so it will automatically be graded. Save and continue. And then right at the end, I'm going to add another question before they go on to subtracting. I'm going to do an open-ended question. So that's at 5 minutes, 41 seconds. So what is the rule for subtracting integers? And students will type in an open response. Now remember, this is going to be one that I'm going to now have to grade. You can also see over here on the left side all of your questions that you have so far. Save and continue. If you're finished asking questions, you can stop there. If you want to keep on adding, you would just repeat the process. Once you've added all your questions, you can go right here at the top, try as a student. So you can see exactly what the student's going to see. So the video comes on and when you press play, the students will press play and notice it's 
counting down, it's going through. As soon as we hit the seven second mark, it pops up with the first multiple choice question and it tells the students to solve 12 plus a negative seven. They click their answer, submit, and notice it says to try another response because that wasn't the right answer. Try again. And in just a moment, I'll show you that it actually shows you if the students had to retry their answer. They didn't get it right the first time. It shows you that in the data at the end. If the student says, oh, like, I want to rewatch the video. If this was a video you were teaching them how to do this, they can go back right here and rewatch the lesson and then come back and answer the question if they need to do that. Press continue. The video will continue to play, but we know our next question is not until 4.07, so we're not going to wait that long. I'm going to speed you along. And the next question pops up. The student answers the question. If they get it right the first time, it tells them, perfect, we're good. Continue. The next question pops up. What are the rules for subtracting integers? The student will type their answer and submit. If they need to go back and rewatch something, they can do that as well here. Submit. And then they can continue watching the video. If you've added more questions, of course, they would be there. Once you are happy with all your questions, you go up here to the top, click Attach. And this video is now attached. In your Google Classroom, you're going to choose who it's for. You're gonna, you can select a due date. You can select your topic. You can select your category and your points, just like you do with any other Google Classroom assignment, and then you assign. So there it is. Once your students have finished the assignment, you're going to go back into the assignment under Classwork. Go to View Instructions. Then you want to go right here to Student Work. You will have all your students listed here, and you're going to go into Class Insights. So once you open Insights, this is the screen that will show up and you will have all your students listed over here on the left hand side. Here you can see that this student, this very first student, they didn't answer the first question. That's what that gray dot means. They got both of these questions correct on the very first try. That's what the solid green circle means with the check in it. These students down here, haven't even attempted it, they haven't even started the problem. If you click on problem number one, it will show you a list of all the students' answers for problem number one. It'll show up right here. Want to look at two, you can see everybody's answers for problem number two. If you have the green circle, but it's lighter, it's kind of faded out, that means the student used more than one try to get the answer correct. Notice if you click on a student's name, you can come over here on the side. You can grade the paper, you can give them private comments, anything just like you do in Google Classroom and then return it to the student. Hope you found this video helpful. Remember, step out, be uniquely wonderful you, and have a great day.